Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys a ridiculously cool knife in the form of a review slash overview. And that knife is the Kunmu Knives S-Tau in the Sheep's Foot Blade. Big deal, we've seen the S-Tau before. In fact, you've reviewed it, so what? It's got a Sheep's Foot Blade. This is in freaking Vanax Super Clean, um, or Vanax 37. Uh, so what is Vanax? Vanax is made by Bowler, the same people who make M390. The cool thing about Vanax is that it is extremely, extremely corrosion resistant. Think, uh, somebody in the comments a long time ago said, think LC200N, but with way better edge retention. And that appears to be the case. Uh, Vanax apparently shines or is supposed to be heat treated somewhere between 60 and 61. It can get a little bit higher. What I think is really interesting and really cool is that Kunwu is nailing that. In fact, they boast 60 to 62 Rockwell. Edge retention of Vanax is going to come in on the low end at about where S35, S45 VN is. And if you get it up there at 62, it can approach where M390 is, but it has better corrosion resistance. It's my understanding that the other elements are pretty good. It's not the toughest steel in the world, but it's okay, right? And it's not necessarily a nightmare to touch up. This is a really cool blade steel, and honestly, I, I kind of like them, even though I personally don't need that much corrosion resistance, it's nice to hear that people are not reporting, at least from my perspective, maybe maybe this is untrue, right? I don't have extensive knowledge or extensive you know experience with this steel, but what, what I understand is that people are not reporting uh, that Vanex is a nightmare to touch up or um, resharpen, right? So that's pretty cool. Those are elements that I do uh, care about. So it's nice to get really great edge retention and incredible corrosion. Like, and I mean truly incredible corrosion resistance um, uh, on a steel. This stuff is not cheap. A lot of times I say don't put too much stock into the blade material, right? Don't look at that price tag and go, for that much money, it should be M, you know, or whatever. Uh, in this case, Vanax is a ridiculous ridiculously expensive composition and we do not see this stuff in this tier right forget seeing it in uh, the budget knife world <laughs> forget seeing it in knives that cost under $200 in general right forget seeing it generally in knives that cost over under 500 do they exist yes but it's rare right a lot of times we see this stuff coming in the form of, uh, you know, Damacor or, you know, the Damasteel company actually has their own special proprietary uh, name for it. But um, it's essentially Vanax. The core of Damacor is Vanax. So that's the performance stuff, right? So not necessarily a ton of people working with it. And it's really, really cool to see uh, that it is in a knife that's in the standard, like, high-end production knife world. I was really happy with that. I think this is available. I don't know, right? The, by the time you're seeing it, it might still be available. In any case, I will link it right down below so you guys can check it out. I really, really sincerely hope that Kunwu continues to use Vanex in their line because I think people would be really happy to get a hold of it. Kunwu is doing a great job of making really, really nice knives and offering a fair price tag for what it is. So... Awesome stuff. Thanks so much to Kunwu for sending this knife in for me to review. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I have already reviewed the S Tau, so we're going to skip a lot of the stuff that I normally do. Um, overall length here is a little, I mean, we're, we're going to do this in case there's differences. About eight inches. Blade length is three and a half. Cutting edge is three and a quarter. Just a couple of size comparisons here up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2, you can see here that this is definitely a full-size knife. How about up against the Demco AD 20.5? There we go. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? There we go. And finally, we'll put it up against the Benchmade Bugout. And you know what? We'll go ahead and do the uh, Ritter Hogue. I don't know why the only knife I'm skipping is the PM2, but there you go. This is a uh, this is a really good full-size knife profile. How is the action? It's exactly what you'd want it to be. It is very smooth. This is a flipper which is low profile back here, and it's also a front flipper, and it is also a knife that you can kick out uh, using the reverse flick. The action is very good. Kunwu, um, you know, 
initially I was like, eh, they're making the, – the, on paper they sound nice and they're offering some pretty great price tags. But that usually means that there's a corner cut somewhere. And I, I'm so happy that when that, that cynical part of my brain gets smashed into pieces, there's nothing more satisfying than having – even if it's you – Right? Even if it's you doing it, when someone's like, I don't know, my keen senses of quality detect some malicious deception. And then a big cartoon wooden mallet comes out of nowhere and just smashes that equally or even more cartoonish figure to freaking smithereens, right? <laughs> I don't know, just imagine, like, a dastardly, it's like Dick Dastardly mixed with Jiminy Cricket, and he's all hunched over, and blah, right? And the freaking Alice in Wonderland rabbit hammer. <laughs> That's what I imagine, right? I like smashing that cynical part of myself. Um, this is wonderful, and it is expensive. I'm going to tell you right now that this particular version of the towel uh, the regular version of the towel is much less, but this version is 278 bucks. I know, that's expensive, but let's consider that we're getting Vanax here, right? Uh, not, as far as I'm aware, there are not too many other knives in existence that are utilizing Vanax and heat treating it correctly and hitting that price tag. That's truly amazing, right? I think that Kunwu would be very smart. Spoiler alert, this is a great knife, right? I'm going to talk about it here for a little bit. This is a great knife. Kunwu would be very smart, and I'm sure that they're ahead of it, right? The gentleman behind Kunwu, I'm sure. He's always ahead of the game. Be very smart to uh, continue to push his line, which is a very good line, with Vanax, right? Every now and then offer a special version of it with Vanax. Oh, or make that a regular production thing. I don't know. Um, but uh, Kunwu seems to be hitting these numbers in the appropriate range, which is something that's really cool. And I believe that this is something that has been proven. Um, and I like that. And I know the community appreciates that. Um, and uh, I, I just really uh, I, I want to see companies like Kunwu up on a pedestal saying this is how it should be. They're doing it and it's making people happy. So do this. Do this and make people happy because that's what people want, right? We don't want 58 Rockwell M390. Oh, well, it doesn't trip as much and it's easier to sell. We don't want that. We want it, you know, we want it properly heat treated. And if we're banging on it like an idiot caveman on a cinder block and going, oh, oh it's chipping. Well, then that's just an idiot. And that idiots do that, right? It's not the fault. It's not like there's anything wrong with the steel or the knife. It's just sometimes idiots take tools and use them incorrectly, right? And then they try and blame the tool or the company. No. This is nice. This is a knife that I am going to uh, keep and carry and use uh, it's going to go in my uh, regular rotation. It has so far been an absolute joy to carry and use. Has shrugged everything off, right? He doesn't use his knives on anything. I do. But I also clean them, right? Not shy about taking this stuff and cutting things. Not shy about cutting cardboard or showing it on camera, right? Well, that's not use. What's use? What do you want me to do? You want me to take a tamping hammer and pound it into a block of wood? Let me tell you from experience... That doesn't generally go over well, and it's also a stupid way to test a knife or to prove to any community that you use your stuff. No, I'm going to use this as I would any other knife, which is to cut things like cardboard or packaging or rope or rubber or styrofoam or occasionally, uh, you know, a zip tie. Even though those are really harder knives, occasionally I use my knives on zip ties or, or even wood, right? That's what I'm going to do. Um, I like that I don't have to baby this steel because the corrosion resistance is ridiculously high. I also really appreciate that this is a sheep's foot blade with essentially a perfectly straight edge, which makes it really easy to touch up <laughs> or sharpen when that day comes. Also, like even though there's a long blade, it's got a nice little nose for doing draw cuts. This is the style of blade that I love. In, in a lot of ways, this is really kind of a perfect EDC knife for me. And I, love, I, I just really love that. The uh, action I think that we started to talk about is very good. It's very smooth, very satisfying to flip or front flip or reverse flick, right? It's nice that all those fidget elements are included there. I really like that. The edge is also, uh, the factory edge is nice and thin. You saw it kind of going through cardboard there, not having any trouble. But, you know, like cutting um, into paper here, you can see just making a whole bunch of little 
tiny cut so you can see exactly how bitey it is and how ready it is to um, you know, slice into any material, right? The blade is reasonably thin um, uh, on the spine and also reasonably thin down behind the edge and that's just really nice, right? I think it's just a really, really great geometry. Uh, carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. It's really not all that thick. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. I said we were going to skip some of this stuff, but apparently we're not. Really, it's, uh, it comes down to a pretty compact, you know, folded up knife. It's really not all that big or bulky. Inside, I honestly didn't look. Do we have milling for weight reduction? We do. Milled out for weight reduction. Titanium, a little bit of Timascus. Steel wire clip, we'll talk about that. And then the Vanax here. Weight on this particular one, I'm sure that it comes in about the same as the other towel, but honestly, I don't know. Uh, 4.13 ounces, a little bit heavier, not perfect ratios, but I can't say I'm really concerned with the 4.13 ounces, right? If that's too big for you, well, it's too big for you. It's not too big for me. You know, it's just one of those things that's going to come down to preference, uh, depending on your experience with other stuff. Let's do blade stock thickness coming in at... 125 thousandths, which is great. No issue there. Hardware check. Um, let me tell you guys right now. I mean, yeah, you can get my tools in the description. They're really great. Just to move things along, it's T8. Everything's T8 except for the um, lock bar insert screw, which is a T6. You can see it's a little bit smaller. And that's fantastic. Pillar construction with two standoffs, two screws on each side, one screw for the pocket clip. It's easy to take apart, right? They still included their Timascus pivot color, which is really nice. They're still doing the milling on the scallop here by the, uh, in the folded up position. That's the area that allows you to a little, slightly more easily access that um, little opening hole there. And it's the same on the other side, right? And I know they didn't texture this side, but they did on this side and it looks really nice. We're also still getting this kind of heavy orange peel texturing on the titanium, which is freaking awesome. Thank you for not making it just flat titanium. Now, this particular model, right? It's normally where I critique other companies and I'm like, man, you, you went close to 300 and you gave us standoffs and you gave us a wire clip. Personally, I don't really like the wire clip. Um, I, I'd be okay with a stamped titanium clip on this guy over a wire clip. But the reason I'm not upset with the price tag, considering we're just getting standoffs as opposed to a milled titanium backspacer and the steel wire clip as opposed to a milled titanium clip, is because it's freaking Vanax. It really, it really is expensive stuff, right? And yeah, you can make the argument the vast majority of people will never, ever utilize the elements of Vanex in a way that justifies dollar for dollar this knife over its general competition or knives in even a $50 to $100 territory. Congratulations. That's an argument that's made about a billion times. And honestly, it's about a seventh grade level argument. Everybody knows that. Everybody who's looking at this knife, considering it, knows that. Nobody is waiting to, to have that general wisdom bestowed upon them by the golden light of Jerry from the comments, right? Um, thank you. This is cool because it's in Vanex. And Vanex is, it, it is a nice knife. And some people, some people will. Some people will actually utilize this to its maximum potential, right? Um, that's up to the end user, right? Somebody who buys this and they just put it up on a shelf and look at it, fine, who cares, right? If they didn't spend your money on it, it's not your business. Somebody who buys it and takes it out and beats the crap out of it, right? Jams it into a tree and uses it to climb up the tree and look for helicopters or I don't know what the scenario is, right? The most extreme scenario. Well, that's, they bought it. So that's what they use it for, right? Um, I think it's just really, really great that it's in Vanex. And we're getting this really nice, like typical um, super premium Kunwu package where everything is just done right. <laughs> it's not like an awkward, this was designed and created by somebody who is a knife person, not somebody who looked at the knife hold and got and thought, oh, there's a potent market. Yeah, I'll give that a shot. What do they like? Titanium M390 flippers and bearings? Um, yeah, I can do that, right? Oh, they, they've got like OEMs in place who just do this from people who scribble designs on napkins? Yeah, sure, I'll take a crack at it. Um, some people have done that and been uh, very successful. The owner of Kunwu Knives is a knife person, has been actively involved in the knife world for a long time, cares about the knife community, cares about his product, knows how to make a good design. Ergonomically, this thing is great. 
the standard position is fantastic. The choke up position is fantastic. We have a nice little flat area of the steel here. Looks good. Flat on this blade carries out to uh, 85% the length. We have a nice swedge up here. Real pretty simple. Uh, you know, satin finish here. I still would, I, I would love for them to take a crack at a, um, a high, a medium to high polished tumbled finish. I think that would look fantastic. I understand it's going to be more or less doable depending on the steel and maybe it could actually potentially add costs. Um, they obviously, you know, only cut areas that were acceptable to get this to the price that it was, right? Uh, cutting things like the pocket clip and the backspacer, the idea there surely was to get this as inexpensive as possible because again, Vanax is very expensive. Very, very, very expensive. Um, so yeah, I mean, understandable, right? I like that they just put S Tau over here. I don't know, they, that, I mean, I like that it's minimal. It says S Tau and Vanax. I don't think we need to have S Tau on the blade, just Vanax, right? Uh, I don't mind that their Kunwu logo is right here. Um, on the frame. Then again, it could do without it, right? At this point, I think people recognize Kunwu knives, but that's going to be up to the person who designs it. And honestly, you know, it's not really hurting anything. So it just comes down, that also kind of comes down to preference. Access to the lock bar is very good. You can see it's cut, I think, is it cut slightly above or is it about the same? I think it's actually about the same. But they've scalloped it on either side, which means you can approach it from the side instead of straight down. No double clutch, very easy on the fingers, right? Worst case scenario, the uh, the initial part of the cutting edge is gonna come down on your fingernail, which is what happened right there, which is okay, right? Still no double clutch, really, really nice. No lanyard hole, you can attach one of the standoff if you really want to, it might get sliced by the blade, but I, I can't really say that I care about that. Catering to left-handed folks with um, another uh, slot for the wire clip over here, which is really great. It also comes with extra standoffs if you want to add a little bit of blue uh, to your knife. That's really nice. It also comes with an extra pocket clip and the tool to disassemble it, which is basically saying, yeah, go ahead and take it apart. We don't care. That's really nice, right? It's just, they include that stuff and that's just really, really cool. I like that. Uh, in and out of the pocket, this thing has been a breeze because this is a wire clip that just comes up and stops. It doesn't come to a bill or come over or go blah, like way up too high. Nope, it's fine. In and out of the pocket's great. And if you bend it out, whatever. In the pocket, it literally just looks like you have a paper clip hanging out, right? Is that that's all the more you're gonna see. And then then the outside of the pocket clip. Um, in and out of the pocket, very, very easy. We have a stop pin located back here. I think there's minimal, just a slight bit of shouldering there on the tang of the blade. It's also the closed position stop pin right there. Lockout. Fantastic. No blade play up, down, left, or right. There's your lockup percentage, about 33%, maybe, something like that. Nothing, absolutely solid. No lock stick whatsoever. No pivot lash, consistent in here. Nice click into the closed position and absolutely dead centered, which is beautiful with no double clutch. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, this is ridiculous. This is uh, so cool. I'm going to continue to use this, enjoy it, um, really get a good feel for Vanax. Can't wait to actually sharpen it the first time to see what I actually think. The design of this, I'm, you know, a lot of people are like, well, how can you properly review it if you haven't sharpened it? I'm a design reviewer, right? I'm not really a knife maker, knife, you know, somebody who like does a whole lot of sharpening and extensive testing with stuff like that. Try to make that clear, right? Um, the design itself is fantastic. The blade material on paper is great. Uh, the, uh, the geometry of the blade, I think, well accentuates Vanax for day-to-day -day use or even in some situations, some hardcore use, right? There are some steel parts of this knife, but the knife itself is largely, uh, you know, super duper resistant to moisture in general. This is not a knife that you're going to have to worry about if it gets wet. If it gets wet, you just, whatever, it's wet, right? Just dry it off. It's not like, I mean, it's titanium and Vanax, right? And yeah, the pocket clip and probably, presumably the screws are steel, right? But I'm going to venture to guess that those are pieces that can be replaced if necessary. Um, so if you're somebody who works in a wet environment or even on or near the ocean, right? For the most part, you're going to be okay. 
maybe in some of the most extreme scenarios, because the pieces that are used for the hardware are still highly corrosion resistant steel, right? So it's not like the Terrain 365 Invictus where every last piece of it is, is like that, but this is pretty darn close. And really, for me, you know, and a lot of people, it's just going to be, well, no, I'm not really worried about the rest of the knife. It's just the blade. Sometimes I cut into some sloppy, wet stuff, right? And I, uh, you know, in the past, knives uh, that I've enjoyed, um, you know, have had issues with corrosion resistance. This is going to be a beneficial knife for you. And it's not going to break the bank for everybody. It's still going to be way too expensive for a lot of people, but... If you're going to graduate into this territory, this is one of the best sub $300 knives in existence, right? And it's been hard for me to pinpoint that in the past, but I can easily say, specifically, the Kunwu Tao Sheep's Foot Van Axe is one of the best sub $300 knives in existence. You are getting dollar for dollar, you're getting your money's worth and then some, right? I can only imagine if like Riot or We. Or Best Egg started using Vanax on some of their designs. Oh my god. I can't imagine what they would charge. <laughs> um, yeah. Pretty cool. This is extremely recommendable, right? If you are, you know, somebody who's new to, brand new to the knife world, start with budget knives. Climb the ladder. Decide if the knife thing is for you and you're actually interested in this tier. Um, the truth is, is the vast majority of my viewers are interested in this tier. And I can say that because I've been on YouTube for five years, have 200,000 subscribers and over 50 million channel views, right? I've got a lot of data that says, yep, that's the case. I'm not trying to flex. I'm saying that's the case. I can tell if you're like, I don't know if that's true. I'm telling you that's true, right? <laughs> I'm seeing a the people watching this are interested in this. For those those of you who regularly watch my content or definitely like knife people, you're into this stuff, get this if you can, if it's available. This is this thing is freaking awesome. Really, really cool. Um, that's going to be pretty much it. This is going to go in my most recommended knives. It's also going to go in my favorite knives of all time playlist, which if you're not familiar, it's pretty rare for a knife to hit both recommended and favorite of all time. It just means, you know, generally recommended, but also a personal favorite. Very, very good. Um, very, very recommendable knife. So please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.